Good morning, integrated math students. Today we're going to be covering the unit six activity. So go ahead and if you're at the activity, uh, which is at, towards the end of the unit, uh, go ahead and open that up and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And what you're going to want to go when you open the activity, you're going to want to go to this integrated math one unit one unit activity, unit six, advanced functions. Go, go ahead and click on that. Then you wanna use the use template right here. So you click on that. And that'll create a Google doc that basically you could just edit as you go. And um, all right, so if you need to learn how to submit this type of assignment, there's a link here you can go to and it'll give you some instructions on how to do that. You could always, of course, um, email your teacher and ask about that as well. But um, let's go ahead and go to the second page here. Um, and I'll go ahead and read this. Um, try to follow along as I read aloud. In this activity, you'll explore the idea that all lines are related to each other, as are all parabolas. Then you will extend this idea to a new function type and manipulate this new function to build your skill with symbolic representations of functions, function transformations. To access this, De this Desmos Classroom activity, go to, and you can click on this link here. And uh, when you click on this link, you're gonna wanna use this code, uh, 5BMUVV. So we're gonna click on that, open that link, and it should take you here. And um, if it looks a little bit different, they sometimes change this picture. Don't worry about that. And we'll just go ahead and put that code in, join. And um, mine says continue activity as Timothy Trigg. That's me. So I'll click on that. You may have to make an account. I'm not really sure how that works, but let's just um, go through this and we'll kind of go as we go here. So uh, these are lines. Actually, there's really only one line in the world. We just move it around to make new ones. Convince yourself this is true by using the movable points to put the black line on top of each of the other dotted lines. So as you can see, you can um, you can move these two points and that moves the black line around and you can line it up with the other lines in this in this graph. So for example, there's this uh, uh, red line and I could put the here. So if you move the points in such a way where it kind of lines up, you can see it's just a matter of moving one line and you can make it look like the other line. Um, you can also make this orange line. Again, just putting these points on the orange line will create the orange line. Putting these points on this, I guess it's purple line, creates that line. Putting the points on the blue line. And you can do this for any line. In and move it around basically. So <clears throat> these are parabolas and you could do the same idea where you can move it around. So notice I can move it over here and make it look like the orange parabola. If I move it over here, uh, it doesn't quite line up, but then I'd move the other point and that changes the, the curve of it, you see? So I can make it like the red one here, okay? Same thing down here, can make, put the vertex on top of that vertex and then move this down and make that purple one and so on. Okay. These are paragulas. Um, I've never heard of a paragula before this assignment, so I wouldn't worry too much, but kind of the idea they're showing is that if it's a general shape, you should be able to move it around to look like others of that shape. So like lines, you can make it look like other lines just by moving it around, changing its slope. Um, as well as parabolas, as we just saw, as well as any other type of graph, basically. Um, so here's parabolas in this case. So I can make it look like this light blue one, maybe, you know, and, you know, play around with this a bit. And you should be able to, like, make each of these if you if you want to, um, just by moving around the vertex and moving around the elbow and the vertex here. 
So you can move the vertex into that location, then move the elbow into its location, and it should kind of should kind of line up here, hopefully. Okay, they're kind of a little tricky to manipulate, but um, you should be able to eventually figure out or uh, manipulate in such a way where it lines up or whatever. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, but yeah, you can you can do that and make the other ones as well. Go ahead and give that a try. Um, take a look at this. Okay, keep on moving here. <clears throat> Uh, you cannot transform a parabola into a parabola, nor into a line. So I can't change this this uh, parabola into a line. You know, I can kind of get it on the line a bit, but it's not going to make the line right. I can I can't make it a parabola um, either, right? And similarly, you can't make a parabola into a line, right? Here, let's drag the black paragola so that it matches the orange one. So here, click on the um, vertex of this paragola and line it up with the vertex of that paragola. And they should be able to line them up perfectly, one on top of the other, just like that. <clears throat> so you move the original paragola about four units to the right by dragging it across. So on the last page, we dragged it across four units to the right. So on this page, um, the original paragola is graphed of the function called f of x. So this original paragola is the function f of x. And um, instead of dragging the paragola, you can make the same move by typing f of x minus 4. Try it. So you have to put the minus 4 in the parentheses. So when you put it in the parentheses, that moves it horizontally, which is what we want. We want to move it horizontally four to the right. So to move it to the right, it's going to actually be minus four. I know that's a little bit uh, counterintuitive, right? You would think that, oh, plus four would move it to the right, but it's actually the opposite. So it's actually X minus four in that parentheses in order to move it four to the right. Now, as you might have already guessed, in order to move it to the left, if you ever want to move it to the left, it would be X plus however much you want to move it. So X plus four or X plus whatever. Okay, and that'll move the function. Um, I don't know why it didn't move my function, but yeah, should you should put x minus four here. Submit, and that oh, I see, and it moves it to the right four. Okay, if you were to put plus four instead, it'll move it to the left. You see that? Um, if you did the plus four outside the parentheses, that moves the function up. Four. Okay, so if it's outside the parentheses, that moves it vertically. Okay, so keep that in mind. And as you could probably imagine, putting a minus four outside the parentheses moves it down. Okay. But since we want to move it to the right, we want to do it in the parentheses. So again, if you put it in the parentheses, it moves it horizontally. And minus four is what moves it to the right four. Okay, so now we're going to shift this paragola around. And we're going to try to make it line up with each of these other paragolas in this picture. So, for example, for the red one, notice I can look at the vertex here. The vertex of my original one is at 0, 0. And the red one is at uh, 3, comma 0. So it moved 3 to the right. So um, let's go ahead and create that function. So how do we do that? Well, it'll be uh, f of x equals f of x, and then we'll do f of x minus 3. Right? And that'll move it 3 to the right. Okay? So that's how you would graph move that function 3 to the right. And you should be able to see uh, now, see how before it was uh, dotted? It was a dotted uh, paragola, but now it's solid, right? So that's how you know you did it correctly, is when the solid one kind of perfectly lines up on top of it. And you should just see one solid paragola there. See, if you did it wrong, you'll see two paragolas. So if I put like plus three, for example, see how it moves it to the left? And and my red, this red one is not on top of the dotted red one. See, that's wrong. So we want to put that to the right, just like that. Okay. Now for one, uh, let's say the orange one, we want that would move it to, we want to move the function to the left. 
How much? To the left, four. So what would that function be? F of X plus four. So adding four is what moves it to the left. Put in the parentheses there. Okay. See if you can, um, so, and then for the green, again, vertically, so this would be F of X. And then if I want to move it vertically, it has to be outside the parentheses. In this case, I want to move it down, down four. So that would be minus four outside the parentheses. Okay. So go ahead and do the same, uh, figure out what the, what you'd put for the blue. And, uh, and then on your, on this page, so if you go back to the Google Doc here, um, you want to go ahead and write those functions in over here as well. So for example, for the red one, we moved it again three to the right, so that would be f of x, f of x, uh, three to the right minus three, okay? And then do the same for all the others here as well. Okay, and finish up the blue one on your own. Summarize your thoughts. Take a moment uh, to make some notes about how to move around the graph of, of f of x using symbols instead of movable parts. So here you you could use the equation editor here, and uh, this allows you to um, write in symbols to so make it look nice and neat. So you could put f of x, you know, and see how it looks all mathy. That's what, this is what you want. So you might, uh, here you just kind of write in words, your response. Um, you could say something about, um, uh, if you want to move the function f of x to the right, dot, dot, dot. Go ahead and finish the rest of that thought. If you want to move the function f of x to the left, dot, dot, dot. Go ahead and finish that thought. Okay. And then if you want to move f of x up, and then if you want to move f of x down. So you should have four total sentences here explaining how to move it right, left, up, and down. Okay, here I'll, I'll help you with this first one to start. If you wanna move the function f of x to the right, you should subtract the desired shift in the parentheses. As I spelled that right. Okay, right. So then um, there you go. So just like that, you know, subtract whatever in the parentheses and that moves it to the right. Okay. And then go ahead and finish that thought for the moving it left and then moving it up and then moving it down. And you want to transfer all that that you wrote he that you write here and transfer it to question two um, of the Google Doc here. And you can see it says slide eight, right? So basically it's the same question. You could just, whatever answer, whatever you end up putting here, go ahead and copy that paste, copy and paste it over here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move along. Okay. Uh, you could also stretch the pragola. Use the movable point to stretch the black pragola so that it matches the orange one. So you could see where I'm, I'm grabbing basically the elbow of the pragola. And if I move it to the elbow of the orange one, they should line up perfectly. And that, that's what we got here. Okay, so you could also stretch the parabola. Um, so you stretch the original parabola by a factor of 2.05. The original parabola is graph of the function called f of x. Instead of dragging the parabola, you can stretch the function the same way by typing 2.05 f of x. Try it. So if you want to stretch something vertically, you just basically put the factor in front of the function. So in this case, we're stretching by a factor of 2.05. So we put 2.05 f of x. And when we put it like that, basically it's saying 2.05 times f of x. So it's times that function. And you should see the dotted, the black dotted parabola perfectly lined up with the orange one. Okay. 
Um, now you can do that for all these here. So you could stretch it, but also compress it. Notice the orange one, for example, is smaller. And then also the blue one is kind of stretched uh, horizontally. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So for the red one, how do I figure out the factor of the stretch? So what I like to do is I look at the, we're gonna look at this elbow of the black paragola. Notice it's at negative one comma one. So I wanna think about that negative one comma one, but the red one is at negative one comma one, two, three. So it's multiplying by a factor of three. So for that, we would put three f of x, the red one. And notice you could see the red was a dotted line, but now it, there's a solid line over that dotted line, right? So now you can see, well, I should I said line, I should say paragola. Uh, there's a dotted, there's a solid red one over the original uh, dotted paragola, okay? Now what about for the orange one? The orange one looks to be smaller. Notice its elbow is like right is below the black one, right? So it's like negative one comma one half. So the factor is actually one half. So you could put one half or 0.5 f of x. And what that does, see how that lines up perfectly? Now, the, uh, now that you can see the orange one, similar to the red, there's a solid one right on top of it, which is that's how you know you did it correctly. Um, so again, if you want to make it uh, smaller, you're going to have a, a scale factor that's less than 1. So in this case, 0.5. It's half, half of what it was. For the blue one, this one's not stretched vertically. This one's stretched horizontally, right? Notice this, uh, the elbow for it is at negative 4, comma 1. So how do I stretch horizontally? That's going to be similarly to moving it horizontally. That's going to be in the parentheses. So it's going to be in the parentheses that we're going to uh, put the stretch that we want if we want to do it horizontally. Now, this one was stretched horizontally by 4. So what happens if I put 4 here? Well, that didn't seem to work. Notice the blue paragola that I created is um, kind of like even it's squished, right? It's horizontally squished. Um, we don't want that. So how do I make it stretch like that? So it's kind of opposite is what you'd think of what you'd think. You'd actually want one fourth in here. So I'm going to put one over four. Here. Now you can see that it perfectly lines up horizontally. So uh, similarly, to, uh, similarly to when we shifted, it's kind of the opposite of what we would think when we're shifting it horizontally, right? Remember, the minus moved it to the right and the plus moved it to the left, right? Well, same similarly with stretching it. If you want to uh, stretch it by a factor of four, you actually want one fourth there. I know it's tricky. Um, but if you wanted to compress it by a factor of four, then you would put uh, four. Okay, so compressing it, you'd put numbers larger than one, whereas stretching it, put numbers um, less than one. Okay, it's the opposite, basically, of what we do for it vertically. Okay, so now when you go to your uh, the Google Doc, you're going to put those functions that we that we just created here, and we're going to put those functions right here on uh, problem three, where it says slide eleven. That's how we know we're in the right spot. See how it says slide? We're on eleven of fourteen here. Okay, <clears throat> summarize. So take a moment uh, about your notes, how to stretch the graph. So if I want to, if I want to stretch, the function f of x vertically, I multiply the function. by the desired um, factor. So if I want to stretch it vertically by a factor of 4, I simply put a 4 in front of the f of x. Okay. <clears throat> if you want to stretch the function horizontally, if 
I want to. If I want to stretch the function f of x horizontally, I multiply the x for the x in the parentheses. Multiply the x, I'll put in parentheses, in the parentheses. By the reciprocal of the desired um, factor. So if I want to stretch by a factor of four, I actually want to multiply by the reciprocal, which is one fourth. Okay. If I want to stretch by a factor of three, then I actually multiply the x by one third. Okay. So it's actually the reciprocal there. So you're going to go ahead, go ahead and copy me there. And um, you're going to put that answer also for problem four, where it says slide 12, summarize your thoughts. You know, that's the same answer there. Okay. All right. Put it together. So here I'm on slide 13. Here are the notes about moving the function around with symbols. Okay, so you should see your, your notes that you wrote earlier. You should see those notes here, okay? But it's basically the notes that you wrote on uh, slide 12 and slide eight about how to shift the paragola and how to stretch the paragola. And we're gonna try to create these three Function. So we're going to try to move and stretch the paragola so that it matches up with the red one and then also what matches up with the orange one and then also matches with the blue one. The blue one uh, is a little bit different than what we've done before. Notice it's kind of upside down, right? So let's try to see if we can get the functions that do that. So, hmm, what I would take a look at first is how to make the vertex line up. So if I'm trying to make, let's say, the orange one first, I want to want to move that vertex, which my original paragola is, my vertex is at 0, comma 0. And I want to move it to the right by 5. So I know for in order to move it to the right, 5, that's going to be f of x uh, minus 5 in the parentheses, right? So notice now I've got my paragola kind of lined up, but <clears throat> I don't want it like that. I want it kind of compressed vertically, right? So remember, if I want to stretch it vertically, I'm going to have to multiply on the outside by whatever factor I want. So in this case, notice that if I look at the elbow, for example, the elbow of this solid one that I'm moving around, it's at... 4 comma 1, but I want it to be at 4 comma 1 half. So I'm going to put 1 half here, too. Or you could put 0. 0.5. That should do it, too. And notice, you know you did it correctly. When, when you've gotten your solid orange one perfectly on top of the dotted orange one. Okay, so that's how you know you did it correctly. So I know that that's good. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the red one. All right, so the first thing I would look at is the vertex. So the vertex for the red one is at negative one half comma three. So I'm gonna have to shift it to the left one half and then up three. So how do I shift to the left one half? Well, that would be a plus one half in the parentheses. And then I want to shift it up three. So I'm going to put a plus three outside the parentheses. So now I should have my vertex of my red one perfectly lined up with the dotted red one. You see that? They have the same vertex now. Now I want to horizontally compress this um, by, well, let's take a look. 
maybe well this one the solid red one its elbow is at negative 1.5 comma 4 but i want it to be at negative 1 so maybe maybe i need 3 over 2 here hmm something's not right maybe i need a parentheses around this Maybe I just want to do instead of all this, maybe like this. And then a one half here, maybe. Maybe a two. Okay, that looks pretty good, but I need to shift over to the left another uh, 0 0.5 to the left. So maybe plus 0.5. Okay, closer. Maybe like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That was a tricky one. All right. But, you know, you're going to have to just play around with it a bit so that you can kind of get it in the perfect spot. Okay. In this case, it was like this. They didn't really teach you exactly what's going on all perfectly here, but um, that's okay. Now for the blue one, first I'm going to try to line up my vertex. So I want to move one and five, six, six to the left, and then one, two, three down. So six to the left, that's gonna be plus six, plus six, and then how many down did I say? Three down, I think. Yeah, three down. So minus three, <clears throat> okay? So now notice that the paragola is perfectly lined, the vertex of it is perfectly lined up. However, my original paragola, the blue one here, is is going normal ways, but the other one's upside down. So what you can do is put a minus here, and that'll flip it. Flips it vertically, okay? So they didn't teach you that either, but if you want to flip something vertically, you could always put a minus in front of it, and it does that. Okay. So go ahead and you put these functions, and you're going to put them onto uh, this page right here, on, back onto the Google Doc on problem number five. All right, once you're done with that, let's go on. Malcolm says that the blue paragola is a reflection over the x-axis. Jamal says the blue paragola is a vertical stretch by using, a, using negative one as a multiplier. Who is correct? Well, technically they're both correct, right? If you've reflected over the x-axis, if you reflected over the x-axis, you will get the blue graph, right? Um, also, multiplying by negative one does just that. Multiplying by negative one flips it vertically. So um, they're both correct because uh, multiplying by negative one does reflect the paragola over the x-axis. So both are correct. So I want you to just explain what I just said there. Explain in your own words if you can. And then Put that same answer right here for problem number six, where it says slide 14. Okay, let's go ahead and pause and do that. Now we're gonna move on to this next task, population of a species. All right, so please follow along as I read aloud. It says the population of a species in the wild in Asia has been decreasing exponentially since 1980. This function represents the wild population of the species uh, t years after 1980. So W of T equals 20,000 times 0.95 to the power of T. Now I want to point out that this graph over here is not that function. Okay. This function is not this graph. Okay. 
The Wildlife Refugee, Refugee Foundation noticed this trend before 1980 and decided to try to help reduce the population decline by breeding the species in captivity. The graph shows the number of these animals that have been born in captivity since 1980. So this, this represents the not the declining population in the wild. This does not represent that. This represents the number of, born in captivity since 1980. Okay, so if you can kind of see, like if you look uh, 10 years after 1980, right? So that would be 1990. Um, you can see that they've bred 200 in captivity, right? And you can see 20 years since 1980, so that would be uh, the year 2000, you can see that they have 400 bred in captivity, okay? Use the graph to create a function to represent the number of the species that have been born in captivity. So we wanna basically write a function that, I don't know why it's on green and italicized, but we wanna write the function for this uh, line here. So what would be the function and we want to write it as C of T for the number that are born in captivity. That's what the C stands for. So what would be the function for this, right? So it, we can see it's a line. And we, we just want to find the, uh, we can find the slope of the line. If I go to 10 years, for example, you can see there's a point uh, 10 comma 200. Also, there's the point zero, zero. Okay. So... What's that slope there? So what's the rise? If I'm looking at those two points, what's the rise? What's the run? Well, the rise is 200 and the run is 10. So if I'm doing 200, um, let's just write this out. If I'm doing 200 for my slope over 10, what does that equal? Well, that gives me a slope of 20. So my function will have a slope of 20 and the y-intercept is zero. So my b, my y-intercept is zero, okay? So my function will be c of t equals 20 t plus zero. I don't have to write that, okay? So this represents the number of, of, of the species that are born each year. Um, you could see, so after one year there would be 20 born in captivity, right? After two years, there'd be, there would have been 40 born in captivity, so on. All right, <clears throat> question eight. About how long will it take for the number of the species born in captivity to equal the number of species remaining in the wild? Okay, so basically I'm looking for when will these two functions equal each other? So the number left in the wild and the number born in captivity. Okay, so I've got two functions I want to know when basically when do they cross so what you can do is you can go and graph these two functions and we'll go and see so first um, 20,000 times 0.95 to the power of t so the first function was w of t equals and it was 20,000 times 0.95 the power of t. Okay. So you might not be able to see anything if you're just looking um, at this. And by the way, you can open another tab, Desmos Graphing Calculator, and you can graph it. That's what I'm using here. You might have to zoom out quite a bit before you can see the function, okay? But you can see it over here. So this is the decline of the population as we're going here, okay? Now the other function was our um, C of T, right? And what was that function? That was 20 T. Okay. Now what I'm looking for, I'm looking for when these two lines cross. So that will mean the number born in activity equals the number remaining in the wild. So you can see it would take, if you see where they cross, that's roughly 56.144 years, and they would each have a population of 1,122.887. So we could say roughly at 56 years, and there will be round to nearest hole because you can't really have uh, 0.88 of a individual. Uh, so 1,123, I would say. Okay. So how long would it take 
and our intersection, what was it, 50? Yeah, roughly 56 years. It will take roughly 56 years. Yeah. Now, if you want, and I would uh, suggest this as well, so if I zoom out a bit, I might be able to here, and I might be able to take a screenshot here and copy and paste it into here. Okay. And then that, that basically shows how you were able to come to that conclusion. All right, assuming the, assuming the species has a long lifespan and that all those born in captivity are still alive today, create a function P of T to represent the total number of the species that are alive, both in the wild and captivity. So this P of T function is the total population uh, alive. So that's going to be those currently living in the wild, plus those also that are in captivity. So essentially, our P of T function is going to be our W of T, those left in the wild, plus the, those in captivity, so that's C of T. Okay. So that will give us that P of T, this total population function, will be 20,000 times 0.95 to the power of T, and then plus 20t. Okay. So it's basically just adding the two functions together. That'll give you the total amount left of that species. Predict the total population of the species in the world in, in 2020, if the trend continues. So we're going to use our, we're going to go ahead and use this function, 20,000 times 0.95 to the power of t plus 20 times t. But we're going to replace t with, we're going to use the year 2020. So remember, it's the number of years since 1980. So the year 2020, we're going to actually use the t. The t value will be 40, OK? Because 2020 is 40 years after 1980, OK? So we're going to basically do p of 40 using that same p of t function we just came up with. So we're going to do p of 40. OK, so what that's going to do, how we're going to do that is we're going to use that p of t function that we came up with in problem 9. And we're going to replace t with 40. So that'll be 20,000 times 0.95 to the power of 40. And then plus 20, remember it was plus 20t, so that's plus 20 times 40. Okay. Again, replacing the t with 40. So here's where we're going to need a calculator. So I'm going to put 20,000 times. We're going to do 0.95 to the power of 40. Okay. Point 0.95 to the power of 40. And that'll give me 0.128512. Okay. I think that's enough decimal places. And then plus 20 times 40 is 800. Okay. Then go and add those together. Or we're going to have to multiply the 20,000 times this decimal here. So I've got p of 40 equals, and that 20,000 times that 0.128512 gave me 2,570, and then plus the 800 that are uh, born in captivity. So add those together.
that's 3,370. Let me answer in a complete sentence. Um, if this trend continues, um, I predict there will be a total of 3,370. Um, individuals of this species remaining. Okay. That is, is that the last question? That is the last question. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that that made sense and I hope you're able to get through it. Not too bad. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email is ttriggg at ofy dot org. And um, with that, um, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.